Oh, wow. This is illiterate. This week we are covering the unbearable weight of massive talent. My name is Evan. I just checked out Nicolas Cage's new movie. My name is Taylor. I checked out a uh, master class from the Transylvania International Film Festival, among other things. Ooh. Nicolas Cage is playing Nicolas Cage in a film. A figure whose touch now is perhaps indelible. I mean, you, he has been in so much. He is such a part of our culture at this point. By my count, 119 films total. Lord. <laughs> yeah. And he's only uh, 58 years old also. He's not 100. So <laughs> Right. It's like he's not about to like pass away. That's one of the big things. Is like the, This movie stands to be kind of a testament to somebody who is really going to mean something to the medium. Whether you love him, hate him, don't yeah. care. He is a huge figure in uh, in our in, in cinema right now in our culture, and so what an opportunity to take such an interesting movie and look at such a wild body of work, uh, and get into who this guy is <laughs> for sure. Because so come it, along with us. There is a mythology to him in a way where either he's a genius or completely unhinged when you look at the things that he's chosen or in a way people think maybe he's just nihilistic and he doesn't care what people think of his choices. Right. There's so much surrounding him because just so in 2018 alone, he was in seven movies just that oh year. Oh my God. And then the next year, 2019, he was in another seven movies. So like, he's, wow. you know, yeah. How, what, what to make of him? He's won an Oscar. And I don't and, feel like yeah. you're right. And I don't feel like on that note that he takes like a lot of like supporting roles either. I don't see <laughs> these are yeah, leading yeah, second he's, fiddle. Yeah. But he's making seven movies where he's uh, almost certainly the lead in, in yeah. all of them. Um, yeah. That's staggering. Yeah. And, and just as to start us off in terms of who he is, and then we'll talk about this film and how it got made and how they got him in it. His Oscar acceptance speech, a big line that I see quoted by people who want to be actors, he said, I know it's not hip to say, but I just love acting. That was hmm. smack in the middle of his speech. Hmm. And is that true? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Because maybe that's just it, you know? <laughs> maybe he exactly, just loves it. Exactly. I mean, after seeing the film, I'm like, that sentiment rings true. If, if the film yeah. is to be, you know, that that is very much at the center of it, is like getting to talk about this guy with the guy, getting to celebrate his interesting <laughs> career. I mean, I, and again, you get to talk about wild things like we've covered what, you know, one of those more uh, recent wild ones, color out of space. Yeah. Uh, the Lovecraft piece, uh, uh, one of the more avant garde out there pieces, like he's been taking recently of the Mandy flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Two things like national treasure, the most Disney of Disney. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, to things like the rock going to Alcatraz, pulling Peak a high action. Store. Yeah. Con air. I mean, that this is kind of the reason is to take a guy like this that is myth uh, mythologized as a, through his fans that's in the film itself and get to pluck him out of it and almost like a toy, if you will, <laughs> and get to kind of tinker with him. And in a comedic way, too, because obviously the title is a tongue in cheek. You wouldn't do this unless you had a sense of humor about yourself. Right. What's beautiful is they get to lean into all of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the fan, the crazy fandom is is exhibited in the film itself. That becomes yeah. part of Pedro Pascal's like <laughs> personality. Yeah. So this film branching off of that was created by some of these super fan people, but people that also really love movies like Nick Cage. Tom Gormican is the director who also co-wrote it with Kevin Etten. Kevin worked on The Late Show as a writer, then was workaholics, scrubs, desperate housewives, big okay. comedy flavored TV yeah. stuff. They both worked on a show called Ghosted in 2018. Gotcha. And then that was stopped. And so they started, this is a spec script, which is not based on anything and just nobody asked for it. And they're hoping uh -huh. to sell it. Right. And part of their motivation for it was they just wanted to get creatively fun, kind of like Nick Cage, like his energy of not giving a damn what people think. And this is the most absurd <laughs> idea for a script to have him playing himself. And 
also then this secondary character, I guess may, it's it's like a piece of his mind, kind of of him as a younger self, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, it he's I, I can't forgive me, but I he's it's as if he's playing another character he played when he was young. It's as if they <laughs> right, plucked so... a character out of a of one of a, one of his other movies, but I I I could not remember which one it was. So I, it kind of is. I'll, I looked into the director's. They got mm-hmm. interviewed about it, and it's based on a infamous appearance, which I'll post a link to the YouTube video. It's unhinged. He's on a talk show, Wogan, this British talk show, while he's promoting a film, Wild at Heart. <laughs> oh no! And oh, so no. he d- he comes in doing a front flip, and then karate kicks and rips his shirt off, and like and throws money out into the audience. <laughs> he's just and this it, actually it, enhances yeah. it to me because I, I was like, is it is it another is it a character from like that vampire movie or so? You know, like now to know it's like the single most extra like mm-hmm. strangest <laughs> talk show moment he ever had. And yeah. that is like their their device as <laughs> His inner <laughs> self, right? It's his younger, it's like the more craziest rash moment self. they yeah. saw him as a as a fan. The craziest moment they saw him as a as, when they were children. That became yeah. their device for him as in his inner reflection, which is and it was also lunacy. Yeah. It's hilarious. I'm so glad <laughs> you explained it because that definitely makes it a bit better. Yeah, link in the show notes if you want to see it. It's wild. But 58 year old Nick Cage now. You know, this was a big selling point for him because this is a thing that he was interested in confronting. It's not pretty, but he, you know, (laughs) I wouldn't say regrets it, but it's like he's not proud of that. He's like cringing at that's who he was at 26. You know, it's not who he is now. It's not what he represents. So it's interesting for him to explore that as a younger version of himself. And he also there's a part where he kisses himself yeah that that's was, what i was just laughing about is realizing yeah. how like how this how this yeah. just really deepens everything about that element of this it's yeah. it's definitely like the most like off-putting element of the of the whole movie but I, <laughs> I it was so out there and by the end when he kisses himself it's such it's such a giant stab at just <laughs> at something at art they're just they're going yeah. for it i don't even know if they know what it is but it's so much fun by that point i'm like that's what i was laughing about before you even said yeah, yeah. it. i was like oh my god this complete like you saying like his struggle with that it's not who he is <laughs> but he is going to own it so to see him actually embrace it and make out with it is like it's it's so yeah, funny it's something <laughs> anyway. he's doing he's always doing something you can that's that's what we'll find out <laughs> so this script like i said though was just a random script by two guys that are in the biz it was on the 2019 blacklist which is the most interesting screenplays that haven't been made yet mm-hmm I'll post a link to because you could read what their right. version of it was from 2019, but it's okay. not like they could even get anybody else. You know, they were like, we right. don't know what this is. Our hope was maybe it'll be on the blacklist at the very, very least. We get a few of our friends to laugh or it's get it gets buzz and we get rewrite work on another project. You know, right. If right. it goes far enough, we get to have lunch with him. That would be awesome because he's so cool. <laughs> Right. They didn't see it as a ge- actually. Of course, you want things to get. We made, want to but, make it. <laughs> yeah. So it seems the writing, so ridiculous yeah. that you're not entertaining really those thoughts. That's a day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So the writing process, just a piece of it. They said that it was more so watching a lot of interviews, reading a lot of interviews, because it isn't mm-hmm. so much. Once you get to know about him, the characters he's playing, it's it's acting, and that's what I think a lot of people get twisted around with how parasocial celebrity is now because he right. he doesn't have any social media just this past week it had been 14 years since he'd been on a talk show like he doesn't oh, wow. go it yeah he was I on jimmy kimmel I i'll post no a link idea. to that yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah so he is completely in the work of it and doesn't care about any of that stuff so When they're looking to write him, if they even did want him to actually act in it, they have to know who he is as a person, what he cares about, what he likes. Right. Trying as much as they can to learn about him, which everything Mm -hmm. you see of him is being a character. So that's that's a that's a good bit of work there to have to cut (laughs) all that out and go, no, 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 I need the part where you're talking about you. Uh, yeah. They're digging for those pieces uh, that the daughter is frustrated with about his love for silent cinema. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that stuff. They had to, they so they 
they had all that in the script, but in terms of actually taking a crack at getting it made, they know we have to get studios on board. We have to get interest in this. We have to, if we do want to finally present it to him, because they had said that other people had these sorts of ideas of Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage, or he gets tons of oddball stuff. But if it's like, I have this oddball script, but I have no money and no way to make it, can you help me? He's not going to say right. yes every right. single time. So they eight months of getting this going to get studios, which they were interested in, and eventually Lionsgate was the one that they got. It's a bit of a risk. It's sort of backwards because if he's not on, then it all goes away. It's not like yeah. you can ask another actor to do it. <laughs> you know, you like it's cut him out of it. <laughs> yeah. Or you can't rewrite it all to be Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> you know, like it has to yeah. he has to accept. Oh man. <laughs> um, Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the financiers, like I said, are interested, but they're like, no, he doesn't know, and he could actually be deeply offended. We haven't uh, <laughs> we haven't even reached out to him. So if you send this, <laughs> no to him, idea. Just, no. Yeah. <laughs> so they said they lit a votive candle with him as Jesus when they heard he was reading it. <laughs> oh so my god! Out there. Oh, um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and this is like you said, color out of space. He had just finished color out of space, ah. and he agrees to have lunch with him in LA and talk about it. So they got one of their wishes from oh, very it. good. Yeah. He had turned it down a couple times, even though they, you know, the chatting with him back and forth and saying, I don't think this is going to work, but he get, they, they wrote him a really nice letter expressing their love of cinema, how it's celebrating his work, not just mocking him at all. And there was a sequence Nick Cage revealed, which was no longer in the film oh. where it goes into vignettes from certain films that he was in very quick, but all styled oh. like, German expressionism, like the black and white Dr. Oh, Caligari. Cool. The studio yeah. ended up cutting it because they said it's too far out and it's too, it take, makes it too long. It's, it doesn't fit, whatever. But that kind of stuff is like they knew that he liked that. They knew that that's what he was trying yeah. to do with his career <laughs> was to right. take these influences and put them in modern films. And so they really connected as as people, as uh, lovers of cinema. That's awesome. I so. love that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I would love to see that sequence. That sounds really yeah. great, actually. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. Dang. Maybe in a Blu-ray or something. If I don't, I don't know hmm. if they filmed it to completion, but yeah, Interesting. yeah, yeah, it, it'd be. And then in terms of the working relationship, Tom was saying it's like he treats you like any big director he's worked with because he's worked with Scorsese, Spike Jones, the Coens, Werner Herzog, oh, yeah. Coppola, David Lynch. Like he's like you're on that playing field. He's up at three thirty exercising. And then has already memorized everything and is you're you're in charge, man. Wow. You know, like he he yeah. is he is a professional and humble about it all, no matter what job he takes. Oh, that's but awesome. just one of the differences, the big thing that took the some time to corral him in with was the fact that his family life is first. And we had sort of talked about this in Shrek in our Shrek mm. episode. Like he wasn't <laughs> interested in being a bad guy to kids. Right. Right. In terms of taking that voice role. And it's the same thing with uh, him being involved in Lord of the Rings or The Matrix, because this was when one of his divorces was taking place around 2001. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so he wasn't involved because yeah, yeah. in, he'd have to be in New Zealand for three years. Or right. He was really resistant to a version of Nick Cage that doesn't want to spend time with his kids. Like, that's not real. Right. Most of this isn't him. It's a right. projection of what people think he is. But just that. Right plot point i don't want to be i don't want people to even think that that's why i was struggling was <laughs> because i don't care about my kids that's not true at all right. so they changed it from being because at first he was an absentee father completely removed but now like you said it's more of he's trying to mold his daughter connect with his daughter which yeah. is a struggle that actually exists and not yes, i abandoned yes. them to work on my art that's not what he No, did. it's it's he's in the plight of their their 16 and their interests and the pressures on them are very different than they were 5 10 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. they're not a little kid anymore and it's in particular they're in a place in their life that's hard to connect with. It's hard to be a parent for of a 16-year-old is what they say yeah. and and yeah, I mean, it's a, that's where you find him is not understanding how to, what type of dad he's supposed to be now yeah because he's still the dad for an eight-year-old basically <laughs> yeah so that was something that he changed 
and what got That's it cool, made, yeah. what he was on board for, which makes sense if he's because he yeah, said it yeah. is like one of the hardest things he's done because he's playing a quote type of <laughs> Nick Cage person version of himself <laughs> right. that you like you said is struggling with the past version of himself and yeah back into the media spotlight in a more commercial. This way. is interesting too because I had heard rumblings of another movie being made of him playing himself. But it sounded as if he was more the antagonist. I couldn't tell exactly. Uh, I think it was uh-huh. based on a true story of of like kid vandals breaking in and stealing his like Batman number one comic. But from right, what yeah, I there was a whole comic book heist that happened in real life. Right, that he got a bunch exactly. Of stuff yeah. So like, I had heard that there was supposed to be a movie about that. And and him playing himself was like the hook of it. So I, I thought I was kind of on the realm of maybe that turned into this, but no, it does not yeah. seem that way at all. But it's interesting that he's been like waiting in the water of playing himself even before the, the script pops up even. <laughs> and it makes <laughs> well, like sense. I said, and now yeah, I'm yeah, hearing yeah. it. I'm like, well, it makes sense between the two of like, well, the other one uh, on its face. And, I, you know, I don't know anything about that. It might not even been. You know, who knows, but Real, I, yeah. it sounds more antagonistic. This uh-huh. this is he's obviously the center uh, is the uh, the emotional compelling <laughs> part of it than <laughs> rather than you you stole from me, you kids, you know, uh, but yeah, this, yeah. this is particularly interesting that that was his touch on on the script is changing it back to what type of father does he need to be for her now instead mm-hmm. of, you know, shifting away from this absent or neglect, you know. Yeah. Side. And he has he has sons. He doesn't have a daughter. So it is removed from his real life. Very in that cool. way. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, there is some distance that he can pull from it. But in terms of like the you were talking about his love of movies and the styles that the film evokes and all the different things he's been in. I didn't realize that because I didn't know much of anything about him, but he is very much inspired by the films of the silent era. And that's mm-hmm. where a lot of his acting style and cultural you know, expression in the medium comes from. He had said, like I said, silent era kabuki across cultures, the golden mm-hmm. age of actors like uh, James Cagney, German expressionism. I had already mentioned cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, artsy, esoteric talk, but that's his jam. <laughs> that's in spite of <laughs> what might, some people might perceive as the schlock or the millions of movies that are just churning out. He's like, I, that's, one of the biggest misconceptions. He's like, I care so much about everything. And even if the whole movie yeah. doesn't work, I picked it because there's a scene or it's like an album where it's like, there's a song or a lyric or a, or a chorus oh, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. hits. And it's like, that's what I was trying with that. And I knew that when I signed up and, and that's, I oh, just, that's cool. everything is school <laughs> yeah. for him. Everything is learning. Yeah. So there was a movie that just came out last year called Willie's Wonderland, which oh, yeah. is yeah. inspired by the five nights at Freddy's, horror video game animatronic like Chuck E. Cheese animatronics oh. coming to life and terrorizing. He right. doesn't speak at all the entire film. A truly silent character, which I thought was super interesting. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about this. I forgot. I yeah. you know, I'm remembering the trailers for it. I just thought it was interesting that it like he he, he actually did, did do a silent movie. <laughs> so he did do like I bet he would have loved to do a, I bet he would have just ate up a quiet place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I, it would be completely different with his expressionist style with his, uh, and I think like I had, I had seen, uh, he had just done a Reddit, ask me anything a couple days ago, which again, opening oh, up the yeah. floodgates because he doesn't talk to anybody hardly about anything. And people had asked him in this specific film, he drinks cans and he, somebody was asking like, what was in the cans? And I'll just read this block quote because it was super yeah. inspiring as far as him understanding the craft. He said, your relationship with the movie is far more important than my relationship with the movie. And so you as the audience member can imagine and surmise whatever you want to be in that can. That is a far better answer and reason for the can than anything I could tell you. I want your opinion as to what was in the can because that's the right opinion. <laughs> so that's some of to his, yeah. his distance to the audience is because he's just like he had said his dad had told him. At one point, if you really admire someone's work, don't meet that person because they may not be who you want them to be. Right. 
And that always stuck with him. And it's why when he does meet people, he's humble and nice. And what's the work to you? I'm not going to tell you because if you said, wow, this reminded me of when my daughter died in a car crash. And to him, that wasn't at all (laughs) what he was trying to get across. It doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't take that from you and it doesn't make you wrong. I've always subscribed to that kind of idea about art. So that's really cool to hear that. He's very much into that. And then you had asked off Mike, but what else is specifically this film, him playing himself, talking about himself in movies? <laughs> yeah, there... I wanted a comparable of another movie where somebody is actually not a cameo. There's some qualifiers right. to this because this is <laughs> this is pretty particular where somebody where somebody is really playing themselves as a lead character. Yeah. And so I you can't had think of it. I had two that I could think of or find one of which you've seen and one of which I've seen. And I don't know Mm. if the first one qualifies, you tell me, but Wes Craven's new nightmare could potentially- Oh, yes. Yeah, baby. Yes. Be something to that degree. Because even the Freddy Krueger actor, correct, is- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They they go hard on that one. That's a Mm -hmm. great one. You're exactly right. I think that's just as good. Uh, yeah, I think that's just as good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, what's the, the, what's yours? So what's the other the one? other one that I've seen, which maybe is even closer, uh, is it's called JCVD, which is Jean Claude Van Damme. I don't oh. know if you're familiar with this. It's in I've, French. I've heard about it, but I forgot. Yeah, I, yeah. This is like a like a like a cult. Yeah, two thousands rumbling. I, <laughs> I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's. Uh, it's him as himself, as a struggling actor dealing with family issues, which his real life mired in controversy with his family and cheating and everything and, and, and mm-hmm. multiple marriages. But he goes to the post office slash bank to try and get money. And there's a he- it's in the middle of a heist and him as the actor in this crazy scenario. <laughs> and there's a ton of meta textual stuff where it's like, yeah. at, not to spoil anything, but the most impactful thing is like at a certain point he rises up through the ceiling and you see the stage lights and he goes on this extended monologue (laughs) about art and performance and who you are as a person it's like pretty out there but it's it's the closest thing i could think of to this that's that's Uh, great for anybody who doesn't know Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I think we've we've talked about it a little bit before on the show before, but uh-huh. it is one of one of the later Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. It's the only other one directed by Wes Craven, and it stars the actress Heather Lankenkamp uh, from the original film as herself. Uh, after the supposed film series has ended, so it takes place in our real life, but. They're purporting that that Freddy yeah. <laughs> uh, is is connected to some sort of real evil that will not be ended, and so the, it's her and Wes Craven and the guy that plays <laughs> Freddy all like drudging up Freddy as this real life horror entity. It's really really scary. Yeah, uh, if, highly and, recommend it for anybody who didn't who hadn't listened. I think we might have talked about it when we did Scream. Definitely, um, yeah. If you want to see how it fits into the history of that type so. of referential horror film than than <laughs> they even have the episode. dimension films they even have the dimension films executive in it oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we talked about i think in another episode it's so it's so bizarrely meta i'm so glad that you brought it that you brought it back up those are yeah. those are great examples now i'm now i'm like there's probably more than i'm just not thinking about yeah there's not a good uh because when you look it up I tried. Trust me. It's you just find <laughs> cameo of this. And yeah, it's yeah, not really yeah, yeah, this yeah. sort of thing. But speaking of uh, being in the film business and referencing it, let's talk a little bit about Nick Cage and his history and life and him, his his trials through the film business, because I just know him as the meme that he hasn't even been involved in. He's surprised that so much has gone on. And he knows, you right. know, the Nick Cage right. rage compilation. And he's because he is so agreeable and accepting of an audience and their opinion he's like it's great you know just if you like those four seconds there was a two-hour context behind it so maybe go watch the movie too you know but he's very gracious (laughs) to people but i think a lot of that stems from his upbringing so his father named august was a professor of comparative literature and showed him fellini and german cinema and whatnot in his upbringing so that's how he got the high art sensibilities of it all yes his Mom tragically institutionalized very early on for schizophrenia Mm. and depression. Much of his youth, she was not there, and they divorced when he was 
yeah, when he was 12. Mm. But the rest of his family, his grandfather won the Oscar for the musical score to Godfather Part Two, and his uncle Francis directed, which, of course, yeah. the Coppola family, <laughs> legacy of all of them, <laughs> branching out. There's a whole Wikipedia page on the family tree and what they're all doing and what they all did. But he changed his name so that he would not be involved in the nepotism and people referencing him and all the other stuff that his family was doing. That's pretty bold. <laughs> yeah. Early yeah. on, he he did it in his in his 20s. He was like, I don't maybe even late teens. He was like, I don't want to be got to yeah. forge your own path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know where the cage comes from? No. It is in honor of two things, which really sums up his sensibilities. The avant-garde musical composer John Cage, which mm -hmm. did that famous four minutes, 33 seconds, where he just sits at the piano and you listen to everything going on around you except for what oh, the music yes. is. So that's where he gets it. And then also oh, wow. famed famed uh, black superhero Luke Cage. That's Really? He, yeah, yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> he, loves, okay. he loves comic books, yeah. So it's kind of cool wow. that it's like the commercial mixed with the avant-garde. He's such wow. an eccentric person. Of course, he would pick that name. Even be... that name is a perfect yeah. <laughs> example <laughs> of the persona that yeah. is Nick Cage. That's it, it's, oh, beautiful. Yeah. So once he does that, he basically just spends the next 40 plus years of his life on film sets. And that's yeah. been what he's doing. So not obviously can't get into all 119 films probably won't even name most of them in this but starting out in a way he's come back to his roots he started out the drama independent like his stylings never changed in that way mm -hmm. in his earlier stuff won the oscar for leaving las vegas which was a super low budget couple million dollars right and championed that and then shifted but still trying to input his expressionist style of acting into the adventure genre, boom, National Treasure, The Rock, Con Air, like you said. And he was like, yeah. some of these things I should have been fired for. Like, I'm grateful that they let <laughs> me, you know, some of my co-actors were not happy at all with how I was approaching the craft. But wow. he's, he's always <laughs> stuck with going 100% in on the characters, finding the intense emotion, acting it in an expressive way, how he sees it. Yeah. Challenging himself with different roles. The split from Hollywood, which is, I think, how most modern people know him, he had started, he said, reading philosophy. His personality is encapsulating a lot of that. He's not interested in going to awards or selling himself in the right. same way that other people in this boom time are. Two big things happen at this time. So he has three movies in a row that are very much duds, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Ghost Rider, and Drive Angry. Ah, uh, right. All knowing was the one that for mm -hmm. me where I went, yeah, the, it's starting to head down, <laughs> starting right. to starting to make some um, some really flat decisions here. Uh, that I, was I, the one I remember yeah. going to the theater going, like, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world is? This? Yeah. <laughs> and I think a, a lot of it, too, he was saying it's like the Hollywood world is not what he had come out of and not what he was interested in. Mm -hmm. Like the risks that independent drama films can take. He says like the training yes. roller skates on wheels, say the line this way, act this way. He wanted to explore acting, do different yeah. takes. They say, no, we got it. <laughs> All that kind of <laughs> stuff. Also at the same time as this is happening and the roles that he's taking are not working out in this system, the financial woes are hitting in 2008, 2009. He mm -hmm. had a lot of wealth. At one point, it was estimated he was worth $150 million, and he oh, wow. was not frugal at all. Lavish spending. Yeah. Owned yeah. 15 residences at one point from oh, wow. Las Vegas to castles, plural, in Europe. He bought a deserted are saying, island. Are you saying at one point? At, he has owned 15 places or at one single point single time, point he had 15 he had. at he the had. same yeah. time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah so he's probably owned do, like you could say <laughs> maybe dozens of properties or close to that you know but yeah. at one point he had 15 all at the same moment <laughs> yeah houses castles and island he had to wow, yeah, sell yeah, it all yeah. he also owed millions in taxes and loans he sued his business manager because oh, they're supposed to be managing his you know like he's like how am i <laughs> on the hook i mean also it's his own 
doing in a way too. Um, but I also did want to point out because I looked into this, he's also on several lists for being one of the most generous celebrities. He donated mm-hmm. millions for Hurricane Katrina relief. He had a house in New Orleans. Right. And he is that constantly... rings a bell. I do feel like I hear that that a lot actually of his yeah. name popping up. <laughs> so with this economic strife, I think a pretty noble thing, I suppose, is he didn't want to file for bankruptcy, which so many people said just do that, just file for bankruptcy and get out of it. He was like, I developed this mantra. And admit with- defeat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His, the, the, the mantra that he had, he said, I never had a career. I only have work. And so he's going <laughs> to work his way. Some version of that is in the movie, actually. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Something about the way he views his career. It's never been a career. It's just work. Or, you know, it is, like yeah. That. And so with this, he's like, I'm going to work my way out of this. He's like, I don't want to be the guy sitting by a pool <laughs> drinking my Act my ties. way out of this yeah. hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so after his financial debts needed to be paid around 2010, he has appeared in 46 movies. And this is where he, I think he gets, like I said, that criticism of like, oh, so you didn't care about what you were in. He, he no, no, no. It this is where both. he's like, no, this is where he's showing you his vinyl collection and being like, and this one, that scene on page 46, yeah, yeah. I read that and I said, I gotta be in this baby. Here, let's yeah. check it out. Skips to the scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. So bringing it back to the family stuff, his dad passed away in 2009, Mm. who he was very close with. And then he's also at the same time, he said he's spending 20,000 a month trying to keep his mom out of a mental institution. Like all of that is also happening at once on this. Oh man. And so with a thing, another misconception that he said in this time, which which he was almost ahead of the curve is the video on demand days. Where a lot of people are like, oh, oh yeah. these, his stuff isn't even coming to theaters. And he's like, I didn't see it that way. Look at now. Everything is streaming and it's terrific. Yeah. And people yeah. thought I didn't care and I was just trying to get money to to make him to put him on a VHS. But he's like, I saw it as a family is not going to the theater spending a hundred bucks, including snacks. Yeah. Save oh, it he's for a, a couple totally months and buy a TV. Totally ahead of the curve. Yeah. Completely ahead of the curve on that kind of thing. Around 2014, 2015, he's doing all he's doing streaming movies. And yeah. <laughs> at that point, streaming is not what it is right now. And it's like, oh, you is that the only movies you can get? And he's like, no, no, no. I'm on the forefront of the medium. This will be the medium soon. <laughs> <laughs> and he said like we he talked was about totally yeah. right and it came and it swung all the way around it was an ama- this amazing swing where we're looking at it going like oh he's what is he doing he's in these very strange movies and it swung from these are the movies that couldn't get theatrical releases to these are where the interesting movies are mm-hmm. uh, these are where the interesting filmmakers are cutting their teeth and they are able to get somebody like him. Maybe it's worth like, oh, yeah, maybe we should go check out Mandy. You know, like, <laughs> like it, it's not going to yeah. be what we see at AMC, but uh, it's going to be colorful and uh, rough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I saw it, it, it's yeah. an amazing pivot of somehow being in this corner where everybody saw it as, oh, he's taking cheap movies. And then somehow the it all swung to him. He was totally ahead of the curve. It swung to him. No, oh, no. These are the movies where young filmmakers are really getting to experiment right and because it was his love of movies not just all the things going on in his life and to me like i said the noble pursuit of like i'm not like think of his family he's like no i'm going to work my way out of this that's crazy that's a crazy way to think of it he also said it was the best acting class workshop i could have for this decade of of getting out of the hole of all the money i lost so this is the last part of this getting into the memes the, because also ah. around this time, YouTube has come out. Yes. People then can take these moments plucked out of context and splice it into a farce of all of his crazy acting, the rage Nicolas Cage, or he's either whispering or screaming. Again, now there's all like. You see is the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all that stuff. And then just his, his, he's a very interesting, eccentric person who is interested in a ton of stuff which is where all the mythology around all the crazy stuff he's done and bought happens is because he just is curious about a lot of things. Like he's curious about a lot of movies. So like one of the ones he, when they were filming Mandy, they filmed in Belgium. And during one Mm -hmm. of the weekends, there was a interesting film festival going on in Kazakhstan. He was on the continent. So he went to that film festival. He wore traditional Kazakh dress. And then it became a joke where he looks, it's like, why is he wearing this Kazakh traditional dress 
It's like, he's like because he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's, he's traveling curious. and doing what you do when you go, and he's watching in, cultures, yeah. independent films in Kazakhstan. <laughs> he's, like what he's a not great making guy. it about. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> ma- he's literally not making it about him. He is adorning himself in the culture and trying to go like help their yeah. their uh <laughs> their exhibition of the medium he loves come on yeah and has no social somebody else took the picture and posted it and then they shop it in you know there's a whole reddit subreddit oh, called the no. one one true god and like all the posts are <laughs> no. like went to worship today and it's a picture of a ticket stub <laughs> it's like, oh my yeah, god it's a mess um <laughs> And so he had said, he's like, I've seen, obviously, the sequin pillow, which is, it, like you said, is in the script. Like, they they <laughs> they embrace it. Yeah. His whole thing, he's like, I ask why. And his take on it, he's like, it, it must be something to do with the characters, the facial expressions. Like I said, he yeah. wants to break free of naturalism. It's more abstract. It's more expressionist. It's larger than life. And he's like, in a way, I think people relate vicariously. They want to act out. I am doing some, mm-hmm. I am really going outside that's of the norms That's exactly of real what life. uh that's exactly what Jim Carrey said. He said that oh. it clicked for him when he realized that everybody wants the the guy that lets them be more comfortable because they're doing the thing that they want to do. They don't have to do it anymore because you are doing it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh it's 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 a it's a beautiful notion. It's like, well, if I can do this, then that 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 makes it license for you to do it. It's a weird thing how um, people are inspired by that kind of thing. But I just remembered uh, hearing Jim Carrey <laughs> talk about when he was like figuring out what his uh-huh. act really was. It was. That was the key is realizing that, you know, going to that extent actually put people at ease because he was going to the place that they thought about <laughs> or they, that they related to. Yeah. And I think the word inspirational that you brought up, the second part of that that almost has to happen with it is Nicolas Cage does it and does what he does without regard to how it's going to be received either, Mm -hmm. which is how you can make 119 movies and love the work. Because if you cared that people liked it or not what you did, you can't have Mm -hmm. both (laughs) almost, you know, you can't. uh, I, if so, that's the, that you're assuming the role. I'll be the guy. I'll be the guy to do. Uh, you know, like yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be the guy, so you can put it all on me. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting way to look at uh, performative art. Uh, is the removal of the self being kind of like the the vessel for all of the wills and wants, which yeah. <laughs> really relieves everybody else because they're not worried about will they have to do it, but <laughs> you're doing it, and it, it's that's a very it's a very cool, yeah. Um, it's and a it's very not cool even, way to look at performative art. But I think the way that he can sustain it too in his way is not this uh, sacrificial sense because he loves it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, yeah, he's yeah, always yeah. It, yeah, that's what's so cool about it is he's I like, don't mean to make I don't mean to yeah. make it sound so sacrificial. I'm 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 just no, trying it's a, to, yeah. to depict yeah. it. It's definitely not that. It it it's it works when you find people who derive, you know, like some sort of accomplishment or happiness out of yeah. being that person. And you have to end up, you have to be the guy that's willing to be the guy. Yeah. So that's what's so cool, I think, and why he's such an enigma. And I saw this from a, a article that I read about him. They said he's a sincere man in an ironic world, not the other way around. And that's, mm-hmm. I think, where the misperception comes, why he's on all the memes and whatever, because it's like, yeah. oh, look at how ironic he is. Look at how bizarre he is. And people think they're sincere. But right. it's like, he just loves what he's doing. Also, no, he's being yeah. sincere and you're turning him into irony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lastly, speaking of the sincerity, so a year and a half ago, which again, wasn't really released because nobody cares. He paid it all back. He didn't file for bankruptcy. The millions and millions that he owed. He kept his house in Las Vegas. So that's where he's been living for 15 years. Okay. Okay. He's been chilling there with his uh, talking crow and his kung fu lounge suit and all the the oddities (laughs) that he has. Oh my God, can you imagine? (laughs) Yeah. And he's just, you know, going to keep doing. He's uh, he's already, he's talking about the next film that he's in. Of course, he's already in another one that they're they're working on where he actually plays Dracula. So he gets to do the Thank uh, God. <laughs> expressionist <laughs> stuff. I, I just, I love it that this guy has been in so much. He's been, done everything and he can, from one second, he can be in something as wild and avant-garde as Pig. Yeah. <laughs> and then 
you know, just not too long before that, he's in the biggest Spider-Man movie until recent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. You know, he gets to be in Spider-Verse. And even that character, like, what a perfect character for him to be. But like, It's the, black and white. Yeah, that's what he wants. Exa- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but for, for somebody to be able to go back and forth, to be able to go do something like I'm looking at his IMDb right now, it's the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and then Color Out of Space is just a title up from that. Yeah. Uh, and just going through, it's like, you're, man, oh, the Croods, 2020. He was, so he hit one yeah. of those big studio animation things in the middle of it. And then on to Willy's Wonderland. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Unbearable Way to Mount. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's I, I was explaining his uh, career to, some, to somebody who was just learning about massive talent as a movie. And they saw the trailer, uh, yeah. more of a, a boomer. And they were asking, like, I thought his career was... Uh, you know, Lawton. on the way out. And I said, oh, no, no, it's kind of turned into this whole other thing where he has total freedom <laughs> to be yeah. and do whatever he wants. And he's being, he's able to do and make movies happen that are as interesting and 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 cool as this one. Definitely. So yeah. I, I think there's a lot of that misconception right now or not understanding exactly, you know, older people who were, you know, really huge fans of him in the 90s might not understand exactly all the streaming all, you know, so to some yeah. people, it still looks like maybe he's on the it's like, no, 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 he's as free as he's ever been. And he's doing <laughs> probably his best work. And what an amazing opportunity to be able to celebrate him. At this age, you know, I, I feel like too often it's these things that are hindsight after the fact while these people are, are, are moved on and yeah. gone. He's here. He's still, you know, rel- you know, relatively speaking, he's youngish, <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? <laughs> um, What's well, so- interesting, yeah, it kind of reminds me, tying back to his love of comic books, and we talked about it in several episodes, but just the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of the tastes and zeitgeist mm-hmm. and comics held on through they still adapted to what people were going for. But I feel like in a way he's that way too, where it's like he never stopped trying to do his expressionist Kabuki silent actor as modern actor practice. It just ebbs and flows with the time too. He was doing that in National Treasure and National Treasure Book of Secrets. He was (laughs) massive. (laughs) He was a, he was a character, but like it just comes back around and and the type of roles that he takes. Yeah. He's not, he's not weird. You know we're weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're weird. We're weird yeah. for not being. We're not loving what we love out- outwardly and as freely as he does. Yeah. Um. Th- <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Taylor. This was yeah, a blast. Thank you. thank you guys for listening to this. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope it wasn't uh, wasn't too much of a deviation off of our stuff. We thought this was a really colorful, fun thing to get into. So thanks for walking down yeah. Nick Cage Lane with us. <laughs> <laughs> An adaptation um, of a human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good lord uh, it, on that route man I, and not uh, just another on uh, adaptation the movie stars Nick oh Cage yeah playing yeah. <laughs> playing a writer a real writer playing a, who also has another internalized version of himself uh that right. he's playing against very very heavy incredible incredible nick cage moves one probably one of my absolute favorite nick cage performances Definitely adaptation so and that's the uh we'll, we'll, that's the yeah. <laughs> the contrast of independent artsy deep movies with the commercial hollywood system yes. so it's like it's very yes. much oh what a beautiful what he's all oh, about i'm so yeah. glad that i'm so glad that I, I brought that up right at the end that's, <laughs> that's 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 really if you're if if there was any other thing to hang our hat on for this episode it really is that one that kind of says it all it does it all um God, how yeah. much fun. <laughs> All right. Get at us at a literate pod on Instagram. Let us know what you're interested in. What are you watching? What are you reading? What's coming out? You're so excited for. You never know when we'll do an episode all about that thing you want to know about. Get in touch at a literate pod. And if you would, please smash that like button, rate us wherever you listen to us. It helps us more than you know. If you get any enjoyment out of these episodes, please, um, please give us a rating. And then share an episode, please, with a friend, this one or any other. Go down through our list, see if there's something that you like or they might like or they dislike, and maybe you can change <laughs> their mind. <laughs> but Fight uh, with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blame <laughs> it, us. It really yeah. would be, yeah, seriously, it would, it would be great. Send them an episode, and we will catch you back here next week for all of the good facts that you're waiting for. I can't wait till then. See you then. <laughs>